Good morning children. Today we shall learn about the environment. All the organisms like to live in the nice environment. The environment influences the growth and the development of the organism. Because organisms depend on the environment for the food and many other things. All that surrounds a living thing and affects its growth and development is called the environment. If you look around, you will find many living organisms which are a part of the environment like the plants, animals. We are surrounded by many small organisms too. Few of these can't be seen through the naked eyes. These are microbes like the bacteria, protozoa, etc. You know, the living components of the environment are called biotic components. So we can say this cockroach or the bird or the microbes, human beings, plants, all are the biotic components of the environment. The rest are abiotic components like the non-living things. For example, the soil, air, water, etc. Even the components of the weather like the temperature, sunlight, etc. are also the abiotic components. Now that you know the biotic and the abiotic components of the environment, let us see how they interact. Let us start with the food. The plants make food using the carbon dioxide, water and sunlight during the photosynthesis process. The plant is a biotic component that uses the abiotic components like water, air, sunlight for making its food. The animals depend on plants for food directly or indirectly. The herbivores are the plant-eating animals, so they eat the plants directly. The carnivores generally eat the herbivores, which are dependent on the plants for their food. So we can say that other animals are dependent on plants indirectly for their food. The plants absorb the nutrients like calcium, iron, nitrogen etc from the soil which goes into all the animals which eat them directly or indirectly. You know nothing is wasted in the nature. Few animals feed on the dead animals and the plants. For example the vulture and the hyena etc feed on dead animals. They are called scavengers. So the scavengers also help to keep the environment clean. Also, nothing is lost in the nature. Some organisms break down the body of dead organisms into simple nutrients. Bacteria, fungus, etc. decompose dead organisms body to get nutrients from it. And they turn the complex organism body into simple substances which goes back to the nature. They are called decomposers. The bodies of the decomposed organisms get mixed into the soil to form humus and the plants again use it for their nutrition. Hence the nutrients get recycled and after the death of the organism all again goes back to the nature. It's a wonderful cycle. So, the life goes on in a way that no nutrients are lost in the nature. The plants absorb the nutrients from the nature and produce food. They are called producers. Then, the herbivores eat the plants to get nutrients. They consume the plants directly, so they are the primary consumers. For example, the grasshopper eats the grass. So we can say 
the grasshopper is the primary consumer then the carnivores eat the primary consumers they consume nutrients and the food from the plants indirectly so they are the secondary consumers for example a frog eats the grasshopper so the frog is the secondary consumer and as we saw the grasshopper is a primary consumer sometimes other animals also eat the secondary consumers like a snake eats the frog hence we can say the snakes are the tertiary consumers thus the nutrients and the food produced by plants circulates in all the animals through a chain like system hence it is called the food chain in the food chain one is the food of the next member like in this food chain the frog is the food of the snake the grasshopper is the food of frog you know in the nature there are many such food chains and they may be interconnected too after the death of the consumers or the producers the decomposers like the bacteria etc decompose their body and recycle the nutrients back to the nature now you might think are the plants or the producers too dependent on the animals let us see yes the plants are also dependent on the animals for example the insects help in the pollination which is a must for the seed production and for the plant reproduction many animals also help in the seed dispersal you know the organic substances from the animals increase the humus in the soil that is they make the soil fertile and this helps in the plant's growth so we see the plants are also dependent on the animals and the most important thing to remember is plants and animals including us human beings are interdependent on each other for air the plants need the carbon dioxide for their preparation of food and release the oxygen gas on the other hand the animals including us human beings take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide thus we see the biotic components are interdependent you know a group of interdependent organisms that live in the same region and interact with each other form a biotic community that is all for now bye bye children